Good morning, everyone. What a lovely day out there. The weather is beautiful, isn't it? Brian? Brian just, just told me it's a beautiful day, so, but, but we're not supposed to talk about the weather after last week's sermon. So, no, you can talk about the weather. That's good. As long as you have meaningful conversations following your comments about the weather. But that's good. Uh, it's Palm Sunday. We see the palms in the front and the back church. Thank you, Frankie, for those. They are beautiful. We also have flower arrangements from Jim Hutchinson's funeral. So um, we had this very sad day in our congregation on Thursday. Um, So let's just think of them too as the Hutchinson family when we see the flowers. This morning, it's good to to have that. Um, Today is also not just Palm Sunday. In some traditions, they call it Passion Sunday. So we... I decided to go with the theme of passion this morning, so we, um, we will we'll get into that a bit later on. Thank you for, for Dave and Nan and Robin for the prelude. Uh, those of you who don't know that Dave and Nan served together as ministers in a congregation a few years ago. What, what years were those? St. Godrich. Uh, it was uh, 95, 96. 95, 96 in Godrich. So um, that's good that we can be privileged to have you here this morning and, and play together um, in this way. Special welcome to the folks from Swinton Park. There's a whole pew full of them. Um, it's, it's really nice to have you. We're going to miss you from next week on. I know next week you start with your services after winter time, but um, it was always nice throughout winter to have you and to welcome you here um, at Durham Presbyterian Church and you are always, always welcome to join us um, for whatever you want. Yeah. (laughs) Wendy, it's your turn. Good morning. I missed you guys for the last couple weeks. I did. I did, Rob. <laughs> um, first of all, I would like to mention, and I apologize, Don. For some reason, I thought there was one more day in the month, so I didn't put the prayer group for the final prayer group for this month. I thought it was a week from tomorrow, and it's actually tomorrow, and it's at three o'clock. So we ask you to pause if you can at three and remember those in our congregation and our community and the world that need our prayers. Um, We want to send condolences out to Mark and Anita Alvage and their children. Uh, Mark's mother, Marlene Alvage, passed away. Marlene, um, many of you may know, was uh, a longtime head librarian at the Durham Library, and uh, we do think of them in prayers. This week, as Will said, is the start of Holy Week, and uh, on Thursday, we will be watching The Passion of the Christ. I've seen it before. It's a lovely movie um, in the sense that it portrays quite accurately the story of the, the Passion of Christ, of what Christ went through. Um, but it is graphic. What he went through is graphic. So just be warned if, if you're sensitive to that. Good Friday, the CEC is going to be serving hot cross buns and refreshments from 9.30 until 20 after 10. And then after that, we will be having our Good Friday service. And then please join us for Easter Sunday service at our usual time at 10.30. There is a box at the back of the church, or you could just hand it in to Will, or drop it off at Godfather Pizza's. um, And if you want to order for the good food box, the good food box is only $22, and you get plenty of of fresh produce, both fruit and and vegetables. Next Friday, uh, Sunday will also be the next next generate next gen. Am I saying that right? Yes, next gen. Next sure. gen Sunday service. It starts at seven, and those that have attended it said they enjoyed it very much. Um, the only other thing I want to draw your attention to is we received an env- invitation from Amos Presbyterian Church in Dremore. They are having um, uh, the Markham Youth Choir 
at their church this afternoon at 2.45. It's an a cappella uh, choir. It, there's about 30 members, and uh, they're going to have light refreshments afterwards. So if you would like a, an afternoon of en entertainment, please think about going out to Dremor. Have a great week. Thank you, Wendy. So um, I just want to emphasize our next gen church next Sunday evening. So if you know of any younger generation, anyone who sees themselves as part of the future church, please invite them. Um, it's informal. Uh, we had a really good time last time. Olivia, you should bring your friends too next Sunday. I'm going to be on the lookout for you. Is there anyone that's visiting or new that I missed? I can't really see, but I might have missed someone. Um, and then, any birthdays or anniversaries for this week that we should know of? Anyone? Okay. So when it's Palm Sunday, and we'll refer to that later on as well, but you have this ironic idea of a king coming in to the city of Jerusalem. A king. And a few days later, a man that's being executed and uh, made fun of by the Roman soldiers looking up to him, laughing at him. And if you join us on Thursday night, you'll see how really intense that was. But later on in the Bible, in the book of Revelation, he is described as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. A king of king and a lord of lords that's in confrontation with the world. I want to invite you for a moment of silent prayer where you can speak to God. Honor him today, Jesus Christ, as the king of kings and the lord of lords. Our call to worship will come from Revelation 17. So let us bow our heads in silent prayer. It is written, they will wage war against the Lamb. But the Lamb will triumph over them, because He is the Lord of lords and the King of kings. And with Him will be His called, chosen, faithful followers. We are called to be with Him today. His called, chosen, faithful followers. Amen. Dear brother and sister in Christ, grace and peace to you from him who is and him who was and who is to come and from the seven spirits before his throne and from Jesus Christ who is the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead and the ruler of the kings of the earth. Let us rise to sing to his glory.
Did you feel the mountains tremble? Did you hear the oceans roar? When the people rose to sing of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Did you feel the mountains tremble? He is mighty to save. Oh. 
prayer of adoration and confession. God of grace and truth, we gather in humility and hope because we believe you have the power to change the world, to change it for the better with your love. We gather because we believe no one is beyond your concern. No one is beyond your embrace. Such love astonishes us. Without your grace, we cannot even imagine such love. In this hour of worship, inspire us with a vision of love which will change the world and our lives for goodness sake. Lord Jesus Christ, you call us to be servants, yet we confess we like to be served. You call us to give ourselves away for love's sake, yet we confess we like to hang on to what we have. We can't imagine following you to the cross. As we see your cross looming, we wonder, is this what you have in mind for us? As we remember your sacrifice, we praise your name. Amen. We will now sing the Lord's Prayer together. children's story is very special this morning. Because There's a little girl that wants to come up already. Oh, Caitlin, you're going to join us this morning. That's great. That's great. Amy wants to sit with her mom. That's good too. But the story this morning, Hannah, is the Bible story of Hannah. Did you know there's a lady in the Bible called Hannah? Yeah. And this is our children's story this morning. The story of Hannah. Now Hannah had a husband called Elkanah. Elkanah had two wives, Hannah and Penina. I hope I say this correctly in English. Uh, Hannah and Penina. Hannah had no children, and Penina had quite a few children. And every year they would go up to the temple as families, the whole family together, and they would be together and they would pray in the temple, they would bring offerings at the temple, and close to the tabernacle, that was the holy thing that they had in front of the temple, they would pray and they would bring their offerings. And Hannah was looking at Penina's children playing around and she became very sad in her heart because she didn't have any children. So she decided to go and pray. She sat there around the temple and she just closed her eyes and prayed by herself in a way that you can only see her lips going. 
couldn't hear what she was saying. She was praying seriously. And the priest, the prophet Eli, saw this woman, Hannah, praying. And he went up to her and said, Are you drunk? That's not the way you're supposed to pray in church. You're not supposed to do it like that. She said, No, no, I'm not drunk. I'm just very, very sad. And I'm praying. I'm praying for God to give me a child. And you know what her prayer was all about? She, she prayed to God and said, God, if only you would give me a baby, a baby son, and I will dedicate the life of this son to your service. I will bring this boy to serve you and to be a servant of you in the temple. The next year they came back and I had a boy. A boy called Samuel. And when he was old enough, Hannah brought Samuel to the temple to serve God and to work under the prophet of the prophet Eli. So this is the beautiful story of God hearing Hannah's prayer. When she was very, very sad in that moment, even people around her not understanding what it's all about. She prayed, and God answered her. That's, the way, that's how the prophet Samuel was born, was raised. So, let us sing our children's story this morning, our children's song, I always do that, um, and my teenager here will correct me and roll her eyes. <coughs> That's okay. Let's sing our children's song before you go downstairs for um, truth seekers. Joy like a fountain, I've got joy like a fountain in my soul. I've got joy like a fountain, I've got joy like a fountain, I've got joy like a fountain in my soul. I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got peace like a river, I've got Peace like a river, I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got love for my Savior, I've got love for my Savior, I've got love for my Savior in my soul. I've got love for my Savior, I've got love for my Savior, I've got love for my Savior in my soul. I've got joy like a fountain, I've got peace like a river. Savior in my soul. I've got joy like a fountain. I've got peace like a river. I've got love for my Savior in my soul. I've got love for my Savior in my soul. Have a good time downstairs. Before we open God's word, let us pray. Our Lord Jesus Christ, we came to the service this morning because we love you. Because we have a relationship with you. You're the God of our lives.
We honor you today on this Palm Sunday as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We also came here to be renewed and to grow. To grow in our relationship with you. And it's my prayer this morning that you would reignite the passion in us. The passion to follow you. To do as you did. And the passion to serve. When we read together from your word, we pray that you would inspire us through your spirit. And we pray this in your name alone. Amen. Our scripture reading is from Philippians chapter 2. This few verses in Philippians 2 is often used also as a call to worship in the beginning of a service. Listen for the word of God. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who, being in his very nature God, did not consider equality with God as something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in the appearance of as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the death, even death on the cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. This is where our scripture reading ends this morning. May God bless His word in our lives. We sing now hymn number 218, Hosanna, loud Hosanna. Palm Sunday is a day of irony. 
Just think about the irony of all of this. A rabbi honored as a king in traditional way that kings are honored coming into the city of Jerusalem with palms laid out before him on the back of a donkey. Ironically, a few days before he was to be executed. The whole concept of being a king is that of a ruler, someone that is being served by his servants, by those who are under him as the king. Yet today we call this king that came into Jerusalem the servant king. He rules through service. He is honored today as the king of kings and the lord of lords because of the greatest act of service. Dying on the cross. It's Easter. It's that time of year when we think of the cross and we find meaning in Christ's suffering. Christ being a servant, giving himself. Yet, between this irony of the servant that's a king, he has been misunderstood for centuries. In a sense, it's understandable that, he, that he's misunderstood because of this whole concept, the strange thing of a servant king. Those two words don't belong next to each other. It doesn't gel. It's not working. We're living in a world that's focused on progress, that's focused on leadership, efficient leadership. We read books and we watch shows on TV and we see our own leaders as being rulers, leading the way for us, being efficient in what they do. We live in a world that's focused on success, achieving things. getting somewhere, moving from where we are to what is better out there. In this world we live in, it's really hard to think of a violent, torturous death being associated with kingship. And again, I want to invite you for Tuesday. If you see your way open, come and see the movie with us. Just to allow yourself once in a many years to see that again. How violent the torture really was of this man we call King. You see, our selfish human nature finds it hard to grasp this concept of a leader that's a leader through his service, through what he gives up of himself. Yet, his way is the only way for lasting, true glory. Hear that again. The way of Christ, the serving leader, is the only way for lasting, true glory. The way of the servant king is ours to discover and ours to learn from, to grow in the way we live in following him. We need to figure it out, what it means to die of ourselves. Remember last week's sermon, and not the weather part. 
to die of ourselves, really, to step back of our own ambitions. There was a man called John the Baptist that came to this world to announce this servant king's coming. He was called to go out before Jesus to tell the world of his coming. And John the Baptist said in John 3 verse 30, He must become greater. I must become less. Again, we find irony in these words. It's put together, greater and less. He greater, me less. There's discomfort with that. It's not an easy question for us to reflect on on this Palm Sunday. How do I become less so that He can become greater? How do I myself serve to honor the King? Now, I mentioned this in some circles. This Sunday is also called Passion Sunday. I do think that we will only be able to intentionally become less in our lives and He more if we have passion for this servant king. Sadly, we see the passion for Him being misguided at, in the times that we live in. Many mistakes made, many harm done in misguided passion. Just think of how the so-called evangelicals are exploited in the political arena to get their votes, to stir up emotion, to get them involved in the political arena, to gain power. There's the irony again. To gain power and support. Before we know it as Christians, if we're not careful, we're dragged into debates in a political arena. Abortion, gender equality, made. We can go on with these different things that we are getting dragged in with. We sometimes take passionately part into these debates and without realizing it, being exploited for political gain. Of course, we should have godly opinions about these important matters. There is a way, a biblical way, to consider these intense debates. But let us not get dragged into the search for power, the search for political gain. I believe our passion should be elsewhere. Our passion should be not in taking part in discussions and debates, but our passions in rolling up our sleeves, serving, making a difference in the world. Perhaps our opinion on these important matters would mean much more, would be much more valued by people when they see us serve, and they're alongside us, and in the conversations we have when we serve together, a much better opportunity to share what we believe. Perhaps we should spend less of our energy formulating the perfect answers to all these questions and move our energy into the service that's needed. Less talking, more doing. Less thinking, more acting. Paul says in our scripture reading this morning, in your relationships with one another, have the same mindset 
as Christ Jesus. And just to be perfectly clear on what he means, he's referring to the mindset of a servant. In your relationships with one another, have the mindset of Christ. Have the mindset of a servant. Yes, if you call yourself a Christian, you need to have the mindset of a servant. The pursuit of power, the pursuit of, of honor in this world is contradicting to the mindset of a servant and the mindset of our servant king. Because he gave up all power, godly power. Paul goes to great lengths to explain this in our scripture reading, to say, to illustrate to us that he was God himself. And he gave that away in his nature of serving be a servant king. Paul also goes on to explain how ironically by serving, giving himself away, he will be raised up in heaven one day. Every knee will bow before him and he will really, really be the king. The question for us today is, are we part of that? So let us ask ourselves on this Palm Sunday, what do I need to do in my life to become less so that the King can become more? What ambitions do I need to let go of so that I can, can become better in serving my king. Sermon is short today. I'm going to leave you with a challenge. Take the passion challenge today. I'm going to give you a moment. Think of two examples in your own life. where you are going to go from here today in honoring the servant king with passion. Two practical ways that you're going to go out and serve. Perhaps one in your close inner circle, your family or your friends, the people you see every day. Something that you're going to do to serve. And perhaps another on a brighter um, perspective, brighter horizon, someone in the community, someone at work, someone at school. Take a moment. How are you going to go away from the service today and serve? This is the way we celebrate with passion. When our passion gets turned into action. It's all good and well to sit here and to hear nice sermons and to think of the beautiful songs that we just sang and the nice children's song and all of that. We need to get practical. So on this Palm Sunday, may you honor the servant king by aligning your mindset to his. Become a servant. Be on the lookout for an opportunity to serve. 
show your passion for the servant king when you go out from here today and serve. Amen. We will pray together as congregation and I would want to invite any prayer requests from the pews. Thank you Rose for the written prayer request. Anyone that has a prayer request for the Hutchinson family, the niece, the children, the grandchildren, Lord in your mercy. That also goes with this for those in our congregation who are mourning you can think of the Elvich family, Anita is here, and the Thompson family, and the McFadden family. Lord, in your mercy. For Judith, as she continues her battle with cancer, Lord, in your mercy. For God's call to return echoing in the hearts of those who have turned away. Lord, in your mercy. And then from Nan, for Gaston's sister that was diagnosed with cancer this week. Lord, in your mercy. Any other prayer requests? Thank you, Lord Jesus, that we can pray for everyone that was mentioned here this morning. We pray for many others whose names weren't mentioned. We pray for those who are struggling in this time. We pray for guidance. We pray that you would make a difference through their faith in their lives. We honor you today as the servant king. We honor you with passion and we want to focus our passion on doing what you told us to do, to serve. Help us, O oh Lord, not to get involved in needless debates and conversations, but to stay focused on serving, on showing up, going where you call us to go and really serve, make a difference. We pray that you would help us to serve in our inner circles, in the close relationships we have. Create within us the mindset that you had of being a servant. But also when we go out to work, to school, in our community, wherever we move, build in us the mindset of a servant. Thank you that you call us to do this so that the world can be changed. And thank you that each and every one of us can be part of that. There's no excuse. You're making it simple. Through your Spirit, O oh Lord, inspire us today to respond and to serve. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, the servant king, king of kings and lord of lords. Amen. There is an opportunity for you to serve the Lord with an offering. We bring offerings with envelopes. 
We sometimes make an e-transfer through e-banking. And we also offer, bring an offering when we serve. So let us serve the Lord with what we give. thank you, O Lord, for what you give in our lives. You provide in every need we have. When we bring an offering, we do that with the mindset of Christ. We want to serve. We pray that you bless this offering so that your kingdom may come in our world. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is hymn number 214. All glory, Lord, and honor. Let's sing to His glory.
before we go, just an invitation. There's Palms for Palm Sunday at 12. We will gather as Christians of this community at the intersection, at the traffic light, uh, for a few moments to celebrate Palm Sunday. And our brothers and sisters from the other churches in town will join us. So if you want to join us down there, uh, the weather is nice out. Um, take a palm. Frankie said that it's good. We can take the palms that's in the church today. You know, we just wave and be happy on this Palm Sunday as we celebrate with passion the servant king that we serve. Receive the blessing of the Lord and go with passion and serve in the same mindset that he had. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God our Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We all say it. Amen. Amen.